Going back to, so we're going to finish up the notes from yesterday and now you can put that stuff away. We're going back to the uh, definition of horizontal asymptotes. Got a horizontal asymptote. If a horizontal asymptote at y the limit as the function approaches infinity of f of x equals k. And y equals L if and only if the limit as x approaches negative infinity, f of x equals L. And sometimes those two can, in fact, be different asymptotes. Sometimes the, if I have an asymptote, you go towards negative infinity and not towards positive infinity. Okay? Think of like exponential functions. Think of like exponential functions. As we go towards negative infinity, we have an asymptote. We're getting really, really close to zero, right? Go to positive infinity, no such thing. Okay. Okay. Um, just think for a moment here, or if you want to, write it down. Um, write a limit for, I guess I should have said each asymptote. You want to talk it out real fast? Go ahead. <laughs> Jonah, would you put down? Give me one of your asymptotes. Yeah. So for this one, yeah, I can go three. I heard two and a half. That's a yeah. That's right. Yep. Does it matter that it broke? Nope, don't care about that. Don't care about that. Because we're just talking about as we're going towards infinity, what is it getting close to? 
Uh, another one? Vince? Excellent. Camp? And um, for the um, vertical asymptote, as x approaches 0, f and x goes to the h. Excellent, yes. Now, when we put infinity, remember, that's not actually a an official limit, is it? The limit's a certain number, OK? So now the AP exam is not going to give you both options of does not exist and, the, and infinity. Okay, I've seen it on the AP exam for like uh, free response questions where they accept either one. Okay, they'll accept does not exist or they'll accept infinity. Okay. All right, excellent. Let's do. Do you want to move the bag? Intuitively, what do you think it's going to? Ooh, attention in the ranks. I'm so you can't make it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's do this. Let's multiply top and bottom by. What do you want to multiply them by? All right, so third. Okay, so then on top, we're going to get 2x plus 1 over x cubed, and then 3 minus 8 over x cubed, limit as x approaches negative infinity. So we go towards negative infinity, what's 1 over a big negative number cubed? Zero. Zero. So I have two times a huge number divided by three. It'd be a huge number, but it's a huge negative, negative number. So well done, negative infinity. Well done. Any gut reactions on this one? What do you think? Could you square both top and bottom first and then multiply it by whatever x squared? So I like your thinking, square top and bottom. Um, the question is, does squaring top and bottom change the number? If I do 2 over 7, if I square top and bottom, it would become 4 over 49. Right. But it, if we try to square top bottom, though, do you see how it changes the yeah. It actually changes right. the function, doesn't it? Yeah. By root. Root what? 2x squared, two x squared minus 1. A plus 1. Uh, I don't know. I've never done it that way. I do it a different way, so let's see. So if I do that, 3x minus 2 times root 2x squared plus 1 all over 2x squared plus 1. I 
So my, that's, that's how I feel too. That's not to say there's not, not a way to do this. I like your thought of like, hey, let's just multiply it by one to get, get rid of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if there's a way to do it this way. I never tried it this way. Maybe there is. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to think of this more, again, intuitively. Okay? As I go towards infinity, I don't really care about the negative two, do I? If I've got a trillion dollars, and I've got three times a trillion dollars, and you want to take away two bucks, I don't care. Okay? Don't care. I don't even care about that little plus one right there, do I? So I'm looking at this saying, you know what? I could intuitively, I'm just saying, let me just ignore that. It's three over square root of two X squared. Pretty much the same thing. We get really, really huge. Then I'm like, okay, I think it's 3x over square root of 2 times the square root of x squared, which is really just x, right? And those basically cancel out. So I'm thinking it's 3 divided by the square root of 2. You see my thought process there? That's where my intuition takes me. Now, Let's actually figure out the proper way to, the proper way to do it. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by one over the square root of x squared. Which is basically just one over x, right? Basically. So on the top, I'm going to get 3x over the square root of x squared. That, that's, that's just on, right? Minus 2 over x. On the bottom, because these are both under square roots now, I'm going to distribute it. 2x squared over x squared plus 1 over x squared. Take my limit with me, of course. And that's going to get me the limit as x approaches infinity of 3 minus 2 over x and square root 2 plus 1 over x squared. If I plug in huge numbers, what has happened to this? Zero. What happens to this? Basically zero, so it ends up being 3 over the square root of 2. Follow me? The next one over here Looks like the exact same thing, except for a negative. It's a negative infinity. Is that going to change anything on this problem? Yeah. Heard a no. I've, heard, I've seen. I've seen a no. I've seen a yes. Find someone nearby, you discuss it. What do you think? So, three minus a, a two over a negative. So, be three over a square root of two plus one over negative a square root of b root of two plus zero. Yeah, because, yeah, because nothing else would change. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Can you send the yeah. All right, show of hands. How many people think yes, it is going to change it? People say no, it's not going to change it. Okay. Okay. Get out your lightsaber. Let's check. Let's store like negative one million for X. Store for X. Then let's type into your lightsaber. Uh, I mean, you can make a fraction. Do the fraction bars, it's going to be easier. 3x minus 2 squared of 2x squared minus 1. Julia, that is sorry of. So I'll just I, put it in the wrong. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I just have to read. Okay, okay. I know that was a sigh of. Oh, I hate my inspire because it's too smart. It is too smart. These things are freaking awesome. I don't, I don't know how to use them yet, but they're, they are freaking awesome. I've, I've had mine for over a year. I still don't know how to use them all of them. Well, for that matter, a lot of you've had even just the basic ones for a long time and you didn't know all the stuff you could do with it, right? <laughs> what did you get? You got a negative answer? Negative. Well, so if you plug it in like this, it's negative, but it You got negative? How many people got negative? He's still working. You got positive. I don't know what happened. You got negative? Okay. All right. So, what happened, right? Remember, we're plugging in negative a million, right? Mm -hmm. If I plug in, plug in negative a million and I square it, it becomes positive, right? Yeah. Multiply it by two, subtract one, take the square root, that's always positive, right? If I plug it, what happens if I plug in negative a million up here? It's negative three million, it's like negative three million minus two, right? So why didn't this work? It didn't work because of this whole square root thing, okay? 
x. So if x is negative, x is equal to the, it's not the square root of x squared, is it? It's the negative, x equal to the negative square root of x squared. A little sneakiness there, isn't there? So now if I do it this way, so if I do, you know, one over x, and then, uh, sorry, one over the square root of x squared. Yeah, I need that there. If you do one over x here, then one over negative square root of x squared here, this negative ends up coming out front where everything starts actually working out. Those are the same, right? X and negative X squared. When X is big negative number. So what we have to do is, this is gonna be, this is gonna turn into three minus two over X. The negative right here, I'm gonna bring that, just bring it up front. Negative. It's just like having negative one up front, right? Negative 2x squared over x squared minus 1 over x squared. The limit as x goes to negative infinity. And then we end up with 3 minus 2 over x. The negative square root of 2 minus 1 over x squared. Limit x goes to infinity. Negative infinity. Zero, zero. Three over the negative square root of two. That was pretty difficult, not gonna lie. That was pretty difficult, not gonna lie. But just goes to show you for plugging in negative numbers like negative infinity, you might have to think about it a little more, okay? Just be watchful and think about it. There's actually a question on the AP exam one year, uh, multiple choice one that they actually threw out because um, so many students were forgot to check negative infinity and it wasn't for statistical reasons they had to say, yeah, we had to throw this one out. A bunch of people who got, a bunch of people who got fives were getting it wrong because they just saw it, crunched it, did it, and then moved on. And it wasn't a good question. It wasn't good for like the cutoff reasons. People who guessed tended to be getting it right more than people that actually were showing that they knew what they were doing. So this goes to show be careful when you do negative infinity, okay? All right. That covers it for today. Um, yeah, I got a few minutes left. Uh, you can pack it up if you wish, you can, or you can work on your homework. Um, uh, die roll will determine if the homework's graded tomorrow or not. And um, we might start into section 2.1, which is the last thing that will be on this test. Homework instead of smaller ones. Yes. All right. Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, we can do that. How big is it? Uh, nine inches.